We'll move on to the local elections. Voters are going to the polls in a total of 36 councils in this region. 24 are run by the Conservatives, 6 by Labour and 4 are in no overall control. And there are two new authorities in Suffolk fighting elections for the first time. It's been a tough time for councils making difficult decisions about local services. But will Brexit overshadow all that when people vote? Andrew Sinclair reports. It's nearly that time of year again when we get a chance to say who should run our local council and be responsible for things like sweeping the streets, looking after parks and deciding where new homes should go. It's also a time when the politicians find out what we really think of them. This is the largest set of local elections in the four-year cycle. Some places are picking a third of their councillors. Other places, like here in Norwich, are choosing them all in one go. Oh, yay! Last year, we revealed, with the help of the Norwich town crier, that district, borough and city councils are responsible for 154 different things, services which have all been under pressure. Labour will play the austerity card very heavily. They'll blame the government and they'll blame the local authorities that are controlled by the Conservatives. And this is a powerful um, appeal in the context where I think at the local level, local government services are really suffering in many respects. Now, the Conservative reply will be that, yes, there's been cuts, um, but they can manage these better than Labour would. Very few authorities are likely to change hands this year, but here are three which are worth watching. In Colchester, the Tories need just one seat to win, and there's a major row over plans by the ruling coalition to spend £200,000 on a giant statue of an elephant. It was supposed to be inspired by the entrance of the Roman Emperor Claudius into Colchester in AD 43, when he was apparently riding on a herd of elephants. But the Conservative group says this is a ridiculous waste of taxpayers' money and the money could be spent far better somewhere else. In North Norfolk, the ruling Conservatives fell out last year and the Liberal Democrats took over. The Lib Dems have made this one of their target councils for these elections. Liberal Democrats really think they're in with a chance to win this council in the local elections. I mean, after all, the council was run by the Liberal Democrats from 2003 to 2011 and the local MP Norman Lamb is a Liberal Democrat himself, so they've clearly got quite a strong base of support in North Norfolk. But of course, it was in the hands of the Conservatives until we had the latest vote, so if the Conservatives get their act together, they could also take control too. Peterborough keeps flip-flopping between Conservative and no overall control. The Tories are currently in charge just. But what impact will the conviction of its MP for perjury and the recall petition to have her sacked have on these elections? It's going to be interesting to see whether it makes people more engaged in politics or the opposite because they're fed up of politicians. Now, the candidates, at least, are going to be wanting to focus on local issues. And one of the big ones in Peterborough at the moment is antisocial behaviour. The police have upped their patrols in the city centre and residents are complaining about gangs and feeling threatened by people using weapons and drug dealing. Because these are local elections, some people might actually vote on local issues, but often it's national issues which sway them. And this year, there's one in particular. Polling suggests that people think that Theresa May has made a mess of the Brexit negotiations, so it doesn't reflect well on the Conservatives. But they also feel that Jeremy Corbyn couldn't do any better, so it doesn't reflect well on Labour either. So it may be the year for small parties um, and indeed independents, given that the Tiggers, the independent group, are now saying um, independence and showing that independence might be a very good thing. It could be a year of surprises. No one is too sure what to expect in these elections. But for the next seven weeks, the parties will be giving them everything they've got. Lucy Fraser, you've been out campaigning in the local elections. How often does Brexit come up? 
So with me, when people meet me, it comes up a lot, and that's largely what we talk about. But when the local councillors go out um, or volunteers go out, people tend to talk to them about local issues. I, I was speaking to a Liberal Democrat last week, and he said it, it has not been mentioned once. So if he's not a, a national politician, yeah. I would understand that. And I do hope that people do vote on local issues because, I mean, in East Cambridgeshire, they've frozen the council tax uh, for six years and still delivered services. We've had an, a bypass built. Uh, we've got a swimming pool built. I hope built. That this is not campaigning. Well, I just, <laughs> I just hope that they get some credit for the work that they've done on local issues. And it's not overshadowed by what is a national debate of which they have very limited input into. I presume this is the first time in local elections since you've been an MP when you haven't been out. Uh, yeah, I won't be out campaigning for local candidates. Of course, the independent group isn't running candidates, not a political party. In a sense, the dilemma for me is what I do with my ballot paper, because like millions of other people, I feel politically homeless and there is an alternative that I feel I can credibly vote for. The one thing I would say, though, is there are many great local councillors and probably some very good local authorities across the East that have had to struggle over the last eight years with managing the impact of the scale and depth of these cuts. It would seem crazy to me at the point where we're getting to the point where you can see the end of austerity that we'd plunge ourselves back into it. And in that context, it's not surprising to me that Brexit is coming up. Do, do you think, as, as we heard in Andrew's report, though, that actually them, this may be the year of the independent candidate? I don't know. Um, anecdotally... Not your group, but... Yeah, no, yeah exactly. Anecdotally, I can tell you a huge number of councillors, unreported actually, have resigned their memberships and are going independent. So it may be that some incumbents perhaps stand as independents. And of course, in local government, having independents and independent groups isn't that odd a concept. But we'll just have to see. My own sense is that there is a deep, far, far deeper than even I had realised, distrust of how the two major parties are playing the game at the moment. And that may be reflected in the results. Let's have a look, shall we, at our roundup of the political week in 60 seconds now with Deborah McGurry. Voters in Peterborough to be given the chance to decide if Fiona Onasanya should remain their MP. She was released from jail last month after being convicted of lying over a speeding ticket. If 10% of people living in the city vote for her recall, it will trigger a by-election. Ambulance response times in this region were found to be the worst in the country, according to figures from the BBC, with Wells in Norfolk topping the league. People in the coastal town were having to wait an average of 21 minutes for an ambulance to arrive. On numerous occasions, I was with a very, very poorly um, patient for up to 50 minutes before an ambulance came. On World Book Day, primary school pupils encircled an Essex library threatened with closure. Essex County Council is consulting on whether to close a third of the county's libraries. And this from Suffolk Coastal MP to raise coffee. Well, I never had a dream come true till I was elected to Parliament. She quoted six sets of lyrics from pop band S Club 7 in a speech on chemical regulation. Let's just talk about the ambulances for a moment because a, 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 an MP from this region once said it, that they, the ambulance service was lions led by donkeys. Yeah. Uh, is that the problem there? Look, if you, if you, as I have, go out and do a shift with the crews that are managing this, they are really struggling, but doing an amazing job. But if you look at the structures of management and leadership that have consistently failed year after year, team after team, you've got to conclude that there's something far more structural going on. It's a real concern. But the, the thing is, you see, that, uh, I mean, Wells next to the sea in Norfolk was the worst in terms of delay getting to patients in the whole country. And actually, there just aren't enough ambulances. That's, that's the truth. It needs more money, doesn't it? Well, I think Gavin's right to say and recognise the work that individuals are doing, doing a tremendous job in the ambulance service and across our emergency services. In East Cambridgeshire, the figures are a bit better than that, you know, um, for, for major uh, incidences getting there between 10 and 13 minutes, which is better. But, of course, we can always do more and should be doing more. We, we ought to say that the East of England Ambulance Trust is not here to defend themselves, but 
just one thing that they could do that you think would put it right? One thing, short. Uh, I think you've got to look at your allocation between rural and urban, and I have to say, we do slightly better on the performance because we're an urban area. Good. Both of you, thank you very much for being with us this week. That's all for this week. We're back at the same time next week. We'll leave you today with some more pictures of the children who were trying to save their library in Essex from us. Goodbye.